Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition stop stories. Plans for home cruise spot in Viewford are advancing despite the impact of COVID-19. COVID-19 prevention and control protocols are extended to the end of May. And Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney looks forward to critical changes in CARICOM with a new Secretary General. Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney has completed the first week of a two-week quarantine period following his official travel to Miami, Florida on May 5, 2021. There, Prime Minister Chastney held talks with the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association on the plans for the home cruise spot in Beaufort. Honorable Chastney provided details during an appearance on the GIS Weekend Wrap-Up Program. Here's Homer DeMarc. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney, having returned from official travels, provided an update on several projects which he indicated will be of major benefit to the country and the cruise industry. Highlighting other cruise spots in the region, the Prime Minister noted that given the increase in the size of cruise ships, cruise lines now require more than one home port. As such, St. Lucia would make for a valuable addition. Another infrastructural project on the cards for St. Lucia is that of the UNR International Airport. Honorable Alan Chasney explained how that project complemented the southern home port. The decision was to move the terminal um, perpendicular or off to the side of the bottom of the Kakabeth as we know it. Um, what that would have allowed us to do is, is the following. One is to build a new airport without interfering with the day-to-day -day operations of the existing uh, terminal. And that once the new airport is finished, um, the goal is to convert the old airport specifically into a charter hall, but one designed very much in mind of home porting. So what would happen is passengers would arrive off of the flight um, into the existing HIA terminal, um, which would be reconfigured, and passengers would not be clearing customs and immigration in that facility. What they in fact would be doing is being processed to get into their cabin. So they would get their room keys, they would put all their credit card information, etc. And literally when they leave um, that terminal to the new uh, to the ship, which is only about a mile and a half away, they actually would be just going straight to their cabin and their bags would have been sent in advance. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney explained that the cruise industry is very excited about this venture as it offers additional benefits, including the close proximity of the port to a dedicated terminal, aiding significantly with logistics, saving time, money and creating a better customer environment. He added, however, that the venture has not been without its challenges. The difficulty that we've had, um, Lisa, um, was one, once over, one overcoming the current financial status of the cruise industry. And secondly, that the cruise companies wanted to be satisfied that there were sufficient tours available from View Ford um, to service the remaining passengers. Because as I indicated to you, not all of the passengers getting on the ship would be coming on from St. Lucia. So the, there would be other passengers who arrive on that same ship and would be going on an excursion for the day. And so we've been working very closely with them to give them the assurance, one, that Sufer is actually closer to View Fort, substantially closer to View Fort um, than Castries is. So it means that there's extra time that persons can stay in, in, in Sufer. And what uh, are some of the new tours that we're doing in the Sufer uh, area. The second one um, is the, the opportunity for new tours between Viewfort and Sufer, as well as between Viewfort and Denry. The Prime Minister explained that the meetings also encompass talks with technical personnel to iron out the final details of the agreement. However, a more formal pronouncement will be made at a later date. I will be making uh, a more formal um, pronouncement hopefully in the beginning of June and I'm hoping that the uh, MOU between um, the cruise industry and St. Lucia would have reached the point where we can sign it. So those are the details that we're working on. I felt it was important to go up to Miami because this has been one of the projects that we started from day one and I certainly want to see it through its fruition um, before um, elections. 
The home crew spot will be strategically located in VA4 in close proximity to the UNR International Airport, giving St. Lucia a competitive edge. From the Government Information Service, Humadi Mark reporting. Following recommendations from the command center, the government of St. Lucia has extended the existing COVID-19 prevention and control protocols until May 30, 2021, as St. Lucia continues to manage the spread of COVID-19. The government of St. Lucia is currently monitoring the situation regarding the spread of COVID-19 and notes that over the last week, we have registered an increase in the number of active cases. Today, May 17, the Ministry of Health and Wellness reported that the number of active cases had climbed to 240. Another COVID-19-related death was also recorded, taking the toll to 76. The protocols that have been in place are to remain, including the curfew from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily. All agencies and businesses will continue to implement a blended service operations approach where possible for the employees. All business operations and commercial activities shall cease operation at 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily as guided by curfew enforced for the state of emergency. Social gatherings are restricted to no more than 10 people of immediate family. The government calls on all to continue practicing the infection prevention and control measures to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and keep us safe. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health and Wellness has transitioned from the phased approach to vaccination to targeting everyone 18 years and older with the arrival of 26,400 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. The ministry says it is important to achieve COVID-19 population immunity of 70% or greater to regain some level of economic or population normalcy. As a result, the ministry is ramping up its community vaccination outreach with the inclusion of the mobile pop-up vaccination drive, which began on Friday, May 14, 2021. These pop-up vaccination clinics will be established at various high-traffic sites across the island. Persons are encouraged to continue accessing vaccines at the main vaccination sites, as well as the mobile unit when it's in the area. And the director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, is urging young people to take their role in the prevention of COVID-19 seriously. Dr. Etienne notes that for much of the pandemic, hospitals in the Americas were filled with elderly COVID-19 patients, many of whom had pre-existing conditions that made them more susceptible to severe disease. These trends created a false sense of security among the younger populations who, while fearful of the virus, were not concerned about severe disease. However, increasingly intensive care units across our region are now filled not only with elderly patients, but also with younger people. Over the last few months, hospitalization rates among those under 39 years increased by more than 70%. In Chile, in Brazil, the highest jumps in hospitalizations have been among people in their 40s. In some areas of the United States, more people in their 20s are now being hospitalized for COVID-19 than people in their 70s. Adults of all ages, including young people, are becoming seriously ill and many of them are dying. In Brazil, mortality rates have doubled among those younger than 39. It has quadrupled among those in their 40s and tripled for those in their 50s between December 2020 and March 2021. This is tragic and the consequences are dire for our families, our societies, and our future. Director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne. The safety of patrons at the Lafay Kaimaje Human Resource Development Center is being prioritized. This comes with the donation of first aid kits and fire extinguishers by two residents of the Lafay community. Leland Figuera and his wife, Angel Figuera, in presenting the donation said they are pleased to be able to contribute to the community. That's something that I noticed that it the center needed, and uh, as for me, I can say it's a journey. Seeing that we are new residents, I am pleased for what I have seen so far, and with that, 
I know that the journey will continue. Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, and Parliamentary Representative for Grosile, Honorable Leonard Montout, recognizing the significance of the contribution, contributed hand sanitizer dispensers to the center. He expressed gratitude to the couple for giving to the community in such a meaningful way. We are actually in a time where safety is at a premium. I mean, we know what the world that we're in today. And I thought, okay, fine. We have a safety kit that will remain here permanently, but at the same time, there's another aspect of safety that we must consider. Sanitizing is one of the big protocols that we, in, we engage in these days. And I realize, but wait, we do not have sanitizers here. Well, of course, my hand was sanitized when I walked in, but I thought even if there is not someone standing at the door, if we have dispensers where as you walk in, you can you know, sanitize your, your hands. That in itself would be a measure uh, as well towards the safety and good, good health of our people. Honorable Montu pledged to supply dispensers to other centers in Grosely. The OECS Commission, through its Eastern Caribbean Liaison Service, has defied all odds to continue expanding participation of OECS nationals in the Canada Caribbean Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program, with over 1,000 OECS workers in 2020 contributing approximately EC $37 million in remittances. The first charter flight scheduled to depart St. Vincent and the Grenadines on April 9 was delayed due to the eruption of the last Sofia volcano and the subsequent implementation of emergency security measures. Despite these difficulties, the OECS Commission has since mobilized free charter flights to move 318 OECS nationals to Canada, including 152 workers from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, many of whom are from communities in the red zone or orange zone and have been staying in shelters since the volcanic eruption. Agriculture worker Nolan Joseph shares his experience. friend of mine, mom's. She, um, she asked me if I would like to, you know, take the opportunity, you know, to go abroad and, you know, pick apples and stuff. And I just jumped at the opportunity. I told her yes, and, you know, she did everything she poured to help me, you know, through the application process. And, yeah, I just take it from there. It's been very kind of life-changing, you know, because I get to do more to help my family, you know, and I guess that, that is the whole embodiment of the program to, for you to you know, come on board and to get to change your life and help you to have a broader prospect of life and just to help your family and others. It will be a nice experience you know, to just, in the end of the day, just you know, have a comfortable life. You know? The OECS Commission says the Agricultural Workers Program is especially important to the ongoing relief and rebuilding efforts in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with us. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. The Caribbean community has created history, selecting for the first time a woman to serve as Secretary General. More from Toussaint King English Francis. Dr. Carla Barnett, a national of Belize, has been elected to serve as the new Secretary General of the Caribbean Community from the 15th of August. Her assumption to office will coincide with the end of tenure of Ambassador Erwin LaRock, who is completing his second tenure in office. Dr. Barnett was elected on May 11th during a special meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM, chaired by Dr. the Honorable Keith Rowley, Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Dr. Barnett is the first woman and the first Belizean to be selected for the post. 
And St. Lucia's Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney, was among the region's leaders who decided on Dr. Calabonet's appointment. Honorable Chastney says he is looking forward to some critical changes at the Secretariat with Dr. Barnett at the helm. The Secretariat that we have now, even its name needs to be reviewed. Certainly the structure of the CARICOM Secretariat um, has to be restructured. So when I looked at the job description just of the Secretary General, it's very vague. And I think that we have to become a little bit more specific and hold leadership at the secretary a little bit more accountable um, to what our objectives are. Certainly coming out of COVID, it's very clear that um, deeper regional integration is necessary. We're spending way too much money on um, services that we can't afford. So St. Lucia with a population of 180,000, um, if we were to share in terms of security, let's just use security as an example. Uh, I think we should have a regional security force that is more uh, present in our day-to-day -day lives um, than currently what we have, which is only on cases of emergency. We can deploy people to go to react to a situation rather than having now a central database of everybody's um, fingerprinting, whether we have the access to DNA, um, because it's not to say that criminals are just staying in one place or the other. And we, we also have to have a greater focus on white collar crime as well. Honorable Chastney says integration after COVID-19 will be paramount to the development of the region. Why do we have to have an OECS Civil Aviation Authority, Barbados Civil Aviation Authority, Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority, Trinidad Civil Aviation Authority, when one is suffice? And even for the airlines doing business in CARICOM, it makes much sense if there is a common platform um, that they're operating on. It just makes it much easier. Um, but COVID has really, I think, made it absolutely necessary that we have a, a deeper dive into, into integration. And the CARICOM Secretariat has to play a lead role in that. It can't just be about foreign affairs. I think foreign affairs is important but I don't think it's the only thing. And certainly for us at OECS, um, we're now meeting on a more regular basis. We're now getting the central bank to be more integrated in terms of policy um, and also in harmonization. So we hear many times that we go to the parliament and pass bills that have already been approved by the other OECS countries in the sake of harmonization. Um, and I think this is the same thing that needs to take place at the CARICOM. And I'm really hoping that Dr. Barnett, being a person who has worked there before, has left and is now coming back um, that, uh, that we're going to start seeing these kind of changes taking place. Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.